and uh, I just wrote a letter to all the studios. And at the time, there was only five studios in London, really. There was probably a lot of small, you know, demo studios. Um, but no, there was Abbey Road, Decca, Olympic, um, is it ICP down in Portland Place? Um, so yeah, I just wrote five letters and EMI was the only one that replied and gave me the interview and Ken Townsend gave me the interview and I waited about three months and then just got this call like, oh, can you start on Monday? <laughs> so really, that's how I got the job. Um, interesting, you know, but that's how people were chosen in those days. I mean, Jeff Emmerich lived down the road and Jeff Emmerich, um, when he left school, he thought, oh, I better get a job and walk down the road and goes, oh yeah, there's the recording studios, you know, I'll, I'll go and see if they've got any vacancies. And they said, yes, you can come in. You can come and be a technician, do you know, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was funny in those, uh, in those times because now, of course, you won't get a job unless you've got a degree in electronics or music or something. And um, in, in those days, you know, you had to have a, a, a talent and a desire and a commitment to do it, you know, because once you work in the studio, you got you say goodbye to your social life and your mates and everything else, you know, I mean, it really is seven days a week, forever and ever. <laughs> no sleep, you know, um, you just don't get a chance. You never watch TV again. You, you just don't have a chance once you're, once you're in it, you know. I probably got the job because I was the long haired hippie, you know, I had long hair and, uh, you know, bell bottom jeans, got my clothes at Kensington Market kind of thing. And uh, I realised that everyone else was in suits and ties, you know. I mean, the, the, really, it was suit and tie, you know, smart dress, really. Um, even the young guys my age kind of thing. You know, it was, and I had long hair. I don't think there was any, well, there's Nick Webb. There's one or two other people that had long hair, but everyone else was very clean cut, you know, at Abbey Road. And I always remember if you work on a Saturday at Abbey Road, if you came in on a Saturday, you'd see all these guys walking around with their polar neck jumper or their cravat, you know, they wouldn't be wearing a tie. You got so used to wearing a suit and tie, but on a Saturday, they'd sort of be a bit more casual and have a sports jacket on and a, you know, a little roll neck or something, you know. My first day at Abbey Road was um, Ringo doing Sentimental Journey, Ringo Starr record, which was his first record of kind of pub songs with George Martin producing, it was in the morning. And then in the afternoon was, um, Edgar Broughton band, and uh, which I thought was fantastic because no one, for a start, no one turned up till about four or five in the evening. You know, we were meant to start at two and no one was there till four. And the first thing they did was roll a joint, <laughs> which I was, whoa, <laughs> uh, which I hadn't seen before, you know. Um, and yes, and then the next day it was like Procol Harum and uh, and then I think by the end of the week, it was McCartney's first solo record came in, which I did with John Curlander. This was kind of like my, almost my first session, you know, like where I was allowed to touch. All you did, see the thing, the thing is I was employed as a tape operator. Yeah, that was the official, t there was a balance engineer, which was the first engineer who operated the mixer and the tape operator and what your job was really to operate the tape. So you never actually plugged any mics in or fixed anything, or made tea, for instance. You know, there was a tea lady. Sometimes you'll go and get tea, but your main job was operating the tape. So if you left the room, everything would stop because no one would run the tape except you. You know, you had to work out the, the power dynamics in the room, like whether the producer was giving the orders or whether one of the band were giving the orders, you know, kind of like that. And the great thing with Abbey Road was all the different types of music you did, you know, because, you know, you could be do a week of Pink Floyd and you'll be up all night, you know, working till six, seven in the morning or something and doing all kind of crazy things. Um, and then being at nine o'clock and have to do uh, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf kind of solo singers or Yehudi Menuhin solo violin or, or an opera or something or a Beethoven symphony. You'll, you'll set all that orchestra up and again, just run the tapes. And, and a lot of the time in the studio, people get really confused and you know, and uh, they just need to keep it simple, really.